Hello you guys, I'm Fabio Hart coming back with another video. In this video, what I want to talk about is flat rate versus charging by the hour. So I had received the email, someone watched another video of mine, and they say, well Fabio, uh, why don't you think you'll be losing money if you, if, you, if you charge by flat rate? Here's the deal, here's the deal with the flat rate. Under, let's say five, maybe 6,000 square feet and under, I would probably suggest a flat rate uh, just depending on the mechanics of what you're doing, the, the workload. Okay, so if you have what I would call an extended clean, this is an additional added on to your general cleaning program, whatever your cleaning, your, your general cleaning price is, your general cleaning program. Then you have these other fees. You can charge by the hour or you can uh, add percentages on to, to that. So let's say for an example, you got a square foot of 5,000 square feet, right? You have a facility. It's a smaller facility, 5,000 square foot. If you really think about it, it isn't a lot of space, okay? I can probably get that done in two hours just by myself, maybe two and a half just depending on the load, okay? But a nice, good, clean two hours for me, right, if I'm doing it, right? Now, let's just say you got a 5,000 square foot facility, and we just plan with the numbers here. These, the numbers that I'm going to throw out may not necessarily be the numbers I'm going to charge, but I'm going to just simplify this. Okay, now let's say you got a 5,000 square foot facility and uh, you're charging $300 uh, flat rate. And then let's say there's some, and that's just for general price, by the way, $300 flat rate for general price. Okay, your, your general cleaning program. Now let's say they have some add-ons. They want you to do some ceiling vents. They want you to do, you know, some other things, window ledges, window cleaning, just some other things, right? Okay. You can add additional percentage. You might say, well, I'm going to add 15% to that. I'm going to add 20% to that, right? Or I'm going to add 5% to that. Whatever the percentages are, you can add additional percentages. Or let's just say you clean by the hour. You decided to clean by the hour. Okay, so if you clean by the hour, a lot of times what you would have to charge an hour to make a pretty good profit on that, the client won't pick you up for that, okay? So for an example, if you got a... Uh, and then they watch the time. That's another thing. So you won't you won't make your your worth cleaning a five thousand square foot facility by the hour, right? In my personal opinion, okay. So if you go in too high with the fees, they're not going to pick you up as the client. If you go in too low, let's just say you do it for uh, thirty five dollars an hour or you do it for $50, $50 an hour. You have to make it make sense. A lot of times when you say that hour price, the client looks at it, they say, well, I can get my little niece, my little nephew to do this for 15 bucks an hour. So why are you charging me like $50? So that's the way they look at it. But when you just say, I'm gonna charge $300 flat rate plus the additionals added on, it don't look like a bad price to them. Okay, now $300 might be a little bit, you know, pricey in some areas, especially, you know, uh, metropolitan areas, major cities, your Detroit, your Chicago's, your Milwaukee's, right? They're the major cities, they're cheap as hell, right? But you can go into any suburb, Champaign, Illinois, you could go uh, uh, Southfield, Michigan, and you could go, you know, to other parts that's, that's like the outskirt of your immediate city or major metropolitan city and you will be able to get these prices trust me they pay more outside of the city than they do inside the city okay they're very very cheap they don't want to pay and then they want to add on a lot of work to the pay that they already paying you okay so that's just been my experience but like i say if you charge by the hour for a facility let's say six thousand maybe five thousand square feet and under you're not really gonna get your worth or you're not gonna get the job. It's pretty much gonna be either or, okay? Um, I would suggest to keep it simple, flat rate for anything like, let's say it's 5,000, I like to use 5,000 and under. Anything close to that, that nine, 10,000 square feet, over 10,000 square feet is a total different dynamic. We charge totally different over 10,000 square feet, right? Then we go into maybe 10, 15, 20, 30% uh, of 30 cents per square feet. 
anything over 10,000 square feet. So it's a whole different formula. If you have my paperwork and you have my estimate uh, breakdown form, then you know what I'm talking about. Anything over 10,000 square feet is a whole different dynamic in my company, the way I break it down. Say so yeah, I like to make it make sense. Okay, so there's a lot of softwares out here that are, like, people have brought different issues to me. They say, hey, Fabio, I got this, this software program and I, I ordered this with this, this person or I ordered that. And when they come with the numbers, I tell them, I say, well, you gotta come down on the numbers. I say, trust me, I know what the software is telling you, but if you go in with that number, it's gonna be too high, you're not gonna get it. Some people say, well, Fabio, I'm gonna trust the software, I'm gonna go in with the software. I say, well, go in with the software, call me back, let me know if, you, if, if you're gonna get it, if you got it or not. Uh, I think for the area that you, you're telling me, especially when they deal with the in-city areas, metropolitan Detroit, just a major city, West side, Detroit, West East, you know, North End, Southwest, they do not like to pay. You have to go into your Dearborns, you have to go into your Southfields, your Rosevilles, uh, 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 Bingham Farms, Michigan, right? You have to go into these areas, the, those cities that I was naming is just suburbs of Detroit, right? You have to go into those areas and they'll pay a little bit more. Now they might kind of beat you with the price sometimes, but the further you go out, like the richest area I would say in like Oakland County, and I would say is uh, probably Birmingham, Michigan, where I have a lot of contracts. That, that's where if you want to see the Rolls Royces, the, the Porsche, the, the Maseratis, you want to see the big houses, you want to see the well off, the, the well wealthy people, the well off people, you go in Birmingham, Michigan. You also can find it in Beverly Hills, Michigan, other parts of Michigan too, but again, to get back on topic, you want to stay on the flat rate on the flat rate range for a, for a smaller square footage. The, the larger the square footage, the more time it's going to take you to clean. So yeah, then you might want to do it by hour, and you might also do it by uh, uh, cents at that at that point. So anywhere between ten cents to fifty cents, just depending on what the square footage is, uh, depending on the workload, depending on how many uh, employees or subcontractors you would need to clean it. So all of these things are a factor. Each deal is deal by deal, right? It's, it's, it's uh, uh, client by client, I should say. I need some water. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. Mouth kind of dry. But it's a, it's a client by client deal. So each client, you're going to, look at different. So you're not gonna just look at this video and say, well, Fabio said, just because it's 5,000 square feet, because again, if they have add-ons or what I call extended cleans, which is extended services added to your general program, then you're gonna add maybe another percentage, just depending on how you wanna do it. Or you might have a certain dollar amount, you know, that you add on depending on what those extras are, then you add on those certain extra dollars, you know, onto the, just the general clean. Okay, so a lot of times they don't want to pick you up because of that. They expect everything to be equipped in that one little, well, you can't get a Maserati for Ford Focus budget, right? You, you, you just can't get it. Or Ford Fusion, whatever the case is, right? If you want a Maserati, you got to pay the Maserati price, right? Or you just got to settle for that Ford Fusion. So that's why I tell a lot of people that's in my coach and I say, hey, don't sell yourself short because what's going to happen is this site ultimately become a headache for you, right? Because you have other sites where you're really making money on and you went in so low on this site that you can't really even afford to put anybody in there and have them clean. Trust me when I tell you this because I still have clients like this where I started back in 2012. We still have those contracts and I'm still losing money on them. I got to the point now where I make it up in volume. Okay, again, remember the greedy become the needy. I make it up in volume now. Now, I'm not telling you to go in and undercut yourself. Matter of fact, I'm telling you, I want you to make a profit on every contract that you go after, right? But there are certain contracts where I came in just a tad bit low, and I'm really not making a whole lot of money on those accounts, but I'm not beating myself up. The client gives me no problem. I'm still making money on the, on the contract. Uh, I might have one person in there cleaning. It's actually a loss for me but I feel like I make it up in volume, right? Because I have a lot of contracts. When you think of Toronto, which we operate out of Toronto, when you think of Ohio or Toledo to be specific, 
you think of all of Michigan, Saginaw, Flint, Roseville, Southfield, Oak Park, Detroit, Southwest, Lincoln Park, River Rouge, Wyandotte, uh, Belleville, you, I mean, Ypsilanti, you think of all of these different places, I actually have contracts at these different places. So this is revenue coming in in volume on a monthly on a monthly basis. So whereas I might look at this contract and say, you know what, contract A, I'm not making a whole hell of a lot of money on. I look at it like, well, I'm just gonna add it to the volume load that I make, if that makes sense. And the same thing in Toronto, same thing in Toledo, okay? So when you think you got these checks coming in from Toronto, you got these checks coming in from Toledo, Michigan, and, and, and so forth, I make a lot of money monthly just in volume, okay? So look at it that way, which is why I also tell people in the very, very beginning, don't beat yourself up. Don't go too low, but don't try to uh, go too high. You wanna establish yourself. You wanna get some contracts under your belt. You wanna get some revenue coming in, right? And just because you might feel, cause we all, even the most expert of the experts have underbidded themselves at some point. If they say they didn't, they lying. Everybody has came in a little too low for their liking but they're just dealing with it. But if they keep picking up contracts, they're gonna learn from that mistake. And then the next contracts that they pick up, they're gonna try to make up for that. So, and that's what I tend to do. That's why, so these contracts that I might've came in, and to this day, you still come in, you're like, fuck, I could've came in another $200 more on top of this, right? And I'm just being you know, frugal with the numbers. You say, I could've came in another $200 more. Well, that next contract that I go after, I gotta, Really, I feel like I got to make them pay for my mistake, right? Because this contract, I could have came up two more, two hundred more dollars. Well, that next contract that I go after, I'm really, I'm really trying to make it up, right? So, and it tend to work for me because, again, most of the contracts that I go after now are property management companies. I make a ton of money with the property. I'm, I'm a big fan of the property management companies. They definitely would keep you busy. Yeah, and definitely keep you in shape too, right? Keep you keep you busy. But uh, I also go off of industrial, go after industrial plants, manufacturers, uh, facilities like this, trucking companies, different places like this. Okay, um, this is where I get into the thousands. You hear me say I got a five thousand dollar contract. I got a, you know, at one point I had the the fifteen k contract, the one that you guys used to see me do the videos at that I don't have no more. I go after contracts like that, the more bigger contracts. Why? Obviously, because they pay more, right? I can I can make more. Now they're more of a headache, but I can make more, right? So once you get established, you get familiar with the staff, you get familiar with the routine, then it, it comes second nature to you, okay? But again, if you're watching this and you, you're just starting out, I don't want you to try to go after the big counts. Like I told you on the other video, start small, local dentist offices, chiropractors, uh, little churches, uh, little smaller compact companies, right? Little professional buildings. Start there, come in as a flat rate. If anything under 5,000 square foot, maybe 6,000 square feet, come in as a flat rate. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what the what the price because again, I can tell you a price here that may not be, you, you might lose. I can tell you what we would charge here in, let's say Michigan, and if you're watching me and you're in Las Vegas, you're gonna lose. You don't wanna charge here, which is why it's broken down on my, uh, my uh, estimate breakdown, uh, that's taken into consideration. So for the people that do have my paperwork, uh, they, they know that, and I got people all over that has it, but they do know that uh, the prices are gonna vary depending on the area, okay? So again, I don't wanna get into specific prices on what you should charge. I'm just being, you know, being light with the numbers here for the example so you guys can understand why I suggest that you charge flat rate for smaller compact buildings opposed to charging an hourly rate. Okay, you're not gonna get your worth at an hourly rate or you're not gonna get your contract, you're not gonna get the contract at all because you're gonna come in a little too high, like I said, and they're gonna feel like you're overcharging them. They're gonna feel like they can find somebody to do it for less, which they can. If you come in too, too low, then you're not gonna make a profit. You're really gonna be working for free. So if you come in at a flat rate, they're not gonna look at it like, oh, he's charging me by the hour. They're gonna say, yeah, that's, that's fine. And you might make more and a lot of times you, and when I think about it, you make more doing the flat rate. When it, let's take, let's say the $300 example. You make more opposed to if you say, we're gonna charge you X, Y, Z an hour. They're looking at how much you gotta pay each hour. At least when you do the flat rate and then they watch the clock. You know, I've had 
circumstances where people have little spike cams and they want to see exactly how long it took you to clean. You know, they want to see how long, when did you set the alarm? What time did you set the alarm to exit the building? Like they really get petty like that and they say, whoa, I did a double back. I came back and you guys were gone. So how are you billing us for four hours when I came back in two hours and you were gone, right? We noticed that you cleaned up, everything was clean, but you did it in two hours and you charged you billing us for four hours. So you don't want to do that. At least if you charge $300 flat rate, you can do it in one hour, you can do it in four hours, you're still going to get the same dollar amount, okay? So again, guys, uh, if you have any questions about this, go ahead, you can email me at hollywoodjanitorialserve at gmail.com, hollywoodjanitorialserve at gmail.com. I can help you with your estimates, okay? Uh, I do that free of charge. I still help people with the estimates free of charge. Uh, I do have a long line, a lineup for that. So it's first come, first serve. You just have to wait till I get in, you know, get to you. If you know you got an estimate coming up, try to let me know ahead of time because I know I tell you guys to get it in 20, 40, 48 hours after doing your walkthrough. So if you know you have an estimate coming up, try to prep me for it. Even if you haven't even done the walkthrough, you say, hey, Fabio, I got a walkthrough coming up uh, next Thursday. Um, I, I might need you to help me with the with with the numbers after the walkthrough. Try to prep me for it. You can send an email today. Okay. So again, I don't charge you guys for that to help you with your numbers because by hook or crook, I want everybody to watch my videos. I want you guys to get contracts. Okay. Whether you're in my coaching or not in my coaching, I, I still want you to get the contracts. So uh, just keep that in mind. Okay. So uh, that's gonna wrap it up for now, guys. And the video went longer than I anticipated. But uh, if you want to get part of the coaching, again, 12-month coaching, six-month lead generation, that's $1,000. You can do the FaceTime coaching for $200. That's just for one hour. Put sign me up in the subject line of the email where you get you signed up for the 12-month coaching. Put FaceTime coaching in the subject line if you want to do the one-hour FaceTime coaching with me. Uh, and that's for $200. Okay, other than that, that's going to wrap it up. I'm Fabio Hart, the only person that can ever stop you from starting up your own dreams and making it to the top is you. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and comment, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.